Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at using the Flash F animation component to create a slideshow or image gallery. And this is an auto advancing slideshow, so it's more like something you would expect from a slideshow type thing or a slide presentation. Now all the animations that you see here are created using the Flash F component. There is also a little bit of action scripting involved in this. Nothing too, too complicated and everything I'll try to explain pretty thoroughly so you should be able to follow along just fine. Now this is a an ActionScript 3.0 component, so you need Flash CS3 or better in order to use this component. Now, with that in mind, let's get started. Here is the finished Flash file. You can see we have our first image fade in, and then it fades out, and the next image. And I've got four images here, and then we're also going to code a button that sends you back to the beginning of this slide show and basically replays it. The last image, and then this button will appear like so, and says, Hey, do you want to start over? I can say yes, and it starts over. So, how do we do this? Well, I'm going to start with this file here, and the first thing I just want to do is open up the properties panel and change the frame rate. Oops, I hit publish settings and change the frame rate down here in the properties panel to 30 frames per second. That will ensure that all of our animations are nice, smooth, and flowing. I also want to lock up the background layer, and I'm going to create a new, one new layer and just name it Images. Now I'm going to double click on my content layer, and I'm going to name that AS for ActionScript. Coming back to the Images layer, I want to open up Bridge, and I'm just going to grab these images I have here, one, two, three, four images, and I'm going to drag and drop them into Flash, just like that. Minimize Bridge. I now have all these images in here. I want to kind of spread these images out so I can see all four of them. There's that one. All right, I can see and select all four of them. That's because I'm going to convert them each to a movie clip. Hit F8, convert this to a movie clip. MC underscore IMG1. Select the SUV. MC, whoops, MC underscore IMG2. MC underscore IMG3. And last but not least, MC underscore MC underscore IMG4. If you can manage to spell that correctly, there we go. Hit OK. So these are all movie clips now. I'm going to select the last three of these, numbers two, three, and four. I'm going to right click on them and just hit distribute to layers. That's going to automatically create new layers for them. IMG1, two, and three, or two, three, and four, excuse me. I'm going to drag the images layer to the bottom and just name that, rename that underscore IMG1. So we have all four of our images on their own layers. I'm going to select all four of these images by just clicking and dragging selection over them. Remember that background layer is locked up, so we're not accidentally selecting that. I want to go Window, Align, and just align these to themselves. I don't have the two-stage button checked. Align the bottom of them, and then align the very middle of them. Now, as a whole, I've got all four of them selected, so I can just nudge them up some, nudge them over, and just about like that is fine. Okay, now the way we're going to have this set up, I'm going to double click here to open my timeline back up. The way we're going to have this set up is we're going to set up a timer in Flash to send us to the next frame, and each frame will have its own image on it. So we're going to be going from one frame to the next frame to the next frame to the next frame. So we need to create four new frames here. So I'm going to highlight out one, two, three, and that will equal four total because we already have one. I'm going to right click and hit insert frame. There we go. And image one is going to be on the first frame, so I'm going to grab the image two keyframe and just drag that over to the second frame. Grab the image three keyframe, drag that over to the third frame, and image four over to the fourth. Now I'm going to select the frame after the keyframe of each image. So here I'm on image one layer. I'm going to select the second frame, which you can see contains the second image, and I'm just going to hit F7. That will get rid of image one. Now well get rid of image one on it on frame two and further, frames 2, 3, and 4, and I'm going to do the same thing for image 2, because I only want image 2 to show up on the second frame. So here on frames 3 and 4, I'm just going to hit F7 on frame 3, and you can see it's going to hide it on frames 3 and 4. And then same thing, image 3. I want that to go away when image 4 comes on. So now each of these frames is has its own image, and only its own image, on that specific frame. So now let's set up our timer. Let's come up here to the AS layer, and I'm going to go Window actions. Now setting this action up is going to be 
relatively simple. The first thing we need to tell Flash is to simply stop. When it comes in, the first thing to do is just stop. Don't just quickly play through the images. That would look terrible. The next thing we want to do is set up a timer. So we want to say var, and then the name of our timer. We can call it my timer. And then insert a colon, and with a capital T, write timer. That's the data type. This is a variable, which is a timer. And it equals a new instance of the timer class. And we're going to put an open parenthesis. And we're just going to type, I'm going to start with 3,000 just for testing purposes. This is the amount of milliseconds the timer's delay is. So every three seconds now, because it's 3,000 milliseconds, every three seconds something is going to happen. We're going to place a semicolon at the end of that. Our finish time is actually going to be 6,000 milliseconds, but 3,000 will be a little faster for when we test it. So we're going to type my timer dot add event listener. And this is a timer event dot timer. And timer is in all caps here. Everything I'm typing is case sensitive, including this name that we wrote. However, this name can be anything you want it to be. This can be my timer. This can be your timer. This can be his timer. This can be her timer. It can be anything. This is your name. All the rest of this stuff is very case sensitive. Timer here has to be with a capital T, add event listener. The E for event and L for listener are capitalized. Timer and event here capitalized, and timer as a whole is capitalized. So I've got a comma here and space, and now I need to write a function name. This is basically what do you want to happen every three seconds. And we want you to execute this function called timer f. Now put a close parenthesis and a semicolon. We're going to write this timer f function in just a second. On the next line of code, however, just type the word timer. Well, it's actually my timer. That's the name of our timer dot start. So we're saying take our timer and start it. So start counting down from three seconds. Now we're going to write that function. Write function timer f. It is an event. We're just going to write the letter e. And it is a timer event. Close parenthesis and then colon and the word void. Open curly bracket. Enter return twice. Close curly bracket. Up arrow key. And now we just want you to go to the next frame. So this function called timer f is being called every three seconds when our timer finishes counting down. And all it's going to do is just kick us to the next frame. Sounds pretty straightforward. Let's check it out. Command or control enter to test it. And there we go. Every three seconds it's going to kick to the next frame just like that. Perfect. Now, because each of these are movie clips, we can use the Flash F animation component to create some nice show and hide transitions. So let's grab our components panel. You can go Window Components. I've got mine open here. I'm going to drag the Flash F main component out and just drop it on that movie clip. Now I'm going to select that Flash F component, go Window, Other Panels, Flash F Panel to open up the Flash F Panel. You may need to log in and also make sure that you select that Flash F component. Now we're going to use the Blur, FES Blur Show Transition. We're going to up the blur amount to about 40 and the blur quality we're going to reduce to medium. Now the high transition we're going to select FES uh, let's say Desert Illusion and the wave size we'll change to 50. That's pretty nice and the filters we're just going to apply a simple FEF reflection and we're going to leave this at default and that's it. We're now going to copy this Flash F component, Command or Control C go to the image 2, paste it, and just move it over a little bit. So basically we're dragging and dropping it onto this image, it'll snap to that image. Do the same thing here, paste it, drag and drop to snap it. And here for the last one, paste it, and drag and drop to snap it. Alright, there we go. The last thing I want to do is create a new layer and name it button. And we're going to create a keyframe on the last frame. Right click, insert keyframe, and grab the rectangle primitive tool. It's right here underneath the rectangle tool. And I'm just going to create a nice large button. We're going to make the corners rounded maybe about 18 pixels, maybe 20. 20 looks good. And I'm going to color this. We're going to grab the color panel and I'm going to give this a simple black to white gradient. We're going to double click on the white and we're going to give it one of these dark greens. And I'm going to select the black here and I'm just going to grab a lighter green from here, like so. And I'm going to grab the Gradient Transform tool, which you probably don't see. It's probably hiding underneath the Free Transform tool. So you just need to click and hold to get that menu to drop down. Push these two end handles in and grab the circular end handle and rotate this just like that. Now I am going to grab the Text tool and just type on here, 
Start again, question mark. Move this guy to the center. I'm actually going to open up my properties panel here and increase the size of this text. Okay, so just like that, I'm going to select both the button and the text down, hit F8 to convert these to a symbol. I'm going to say MC underscore uh, button. Just like that. All right, now this button, we are also going to apply a show hide transition to. So I'm going to open up my components panel, drop, drag and drop a flash F component onto that button. And double click to open up my flash panel, flash F panel, excuse me, again. Now I've got this button selected. I want to apply just a show transition and then some button stuff to this. Now this is going to be a simple FES alpha pattern that I add to this. And all the defaults here are fine, just the left to right and gradient width being 50. Filters, we'll just throw a reflection under it, FEF reflection. And under button, the pattern we're going to use is FEB black to white. And this is simply when you roll over the button, the amount of increased saturation or decreased saturation you get. In this case, I want this button to completely desaturate, so I move this to negative 1. When somebody rolls over, the button will completely desaturate. Lastly, a command. We want this to go to a frame when you click it. So we're going to choose FEC go to frame. This is under the command sub tab. Add FEC go to frame. Event type, when the person releases the button. And we want you to go to frame one and stop. Now, one last thing we need to do is just remember that it's going to be about six seconds before this last image disappears. And this button is on the same frame as that image. But it is also above the image. So if we were just to leave this as is, this would appear and be sitting on top of this last image. That can't happen. So we need to go back to the Show tab and choose Options. And we do want this to autoplay. However, we want there to be about a six second delay. So that will allow that timer to cycle through what would normally be the normal six seconds again. So I'm going to say six seconds for that. And that will allow that that last image to disappear. But that's not it, because this image would sit here, or this movie clip would sit here and be visible as long as we allow it to just sit there, even though we are creating the show animation. What would happen is just six seconds into this sitting there, suddenly the show animation would happen. So we need to come over here to miscellaneous and say target is visible and uncheck that. So now the target will not be visible until the show animation happens. Let's check to see what happens. Commander, control, enter. And you can see, here we go, on to our second image. And and there's our button. Now when I click this button, it starts again. But you can see it really jumps there at the beginning. Now you may have noticed it looks really jumpy. And that is simply because our timer here is still set to 3 seconds. So we need to increase this to 6,000 milliseconds. That will make that much better. Now also, to prevent that jumpiness that happens the second time through, what we want to do is come here to the last frame, right click, and insert a keyframe. And on this keyframe, we need to simply tell our timer, so this will be oops, my timer dot stop. So here we're just saying, OK, this timer here that we created that we're telling to start here, when you get to this last frame, we want you to stop. There's no more work for you to do. Just stop. Then when we click the button right here, that sends us back to frame one. You can see the scripting on frame one will tell our timer to start again. So that's fine. Let's just test it real quick. And well, you know what actually I'm going to do? I'm going to, I'm going to move this button down a little bit so it looks more in place and maybe even align it to the center of the stage like so. And uh, grab its flash F component. Now I'm just going to drag it and drop it back on top of it. Now let's preview the movie. Okay, here we go. We're going through it. Notice here that it has time to fade out now. Very nice. And one more image to go. Now after this image, you're going to notice it's going to fade out and then the button scrolls right across. It's got this nice little reflection. And when we roll over, see how it desaturates? Click, and it starts again. No jumpiness. So very nice. So you can see in a matter of minutes here, I've created this entire gallery. Now, when you start doing this, it's going to go even faster than this, because I took a lot of extra time to explain everything I was doing. So when you do this, 
you'll really get into a roll and you're going to start saving an immense amount of time. That's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. Certainly hope you learned something. Thank you very much for watching.